Right before we jump into this video, if you want to get my free 11 days to better photography mini video course, head on over to fronosphoto.com 11 days to get started right now. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and this is your free user's guide for the Nikon D3400. The idea behind this is to help you quickly understand all of the buttons on your camera, as well as the different settings that you can change to, as well as how I personally would set up the D3400 if I was going to use it. Now, some of this early stuff is gonna be basic. If you don't need this basic stuff, look down in the description and click in the table of contents to jump around this video. So why don't we take a look at the outside of the camera first, starting with where the battery goes. So right here on the bottom, you have a door. You flip the battery door open. There's currently a battery in there, but it's really easy. It only goes in one way. Boom, move the tab, click it in, close the door, and you're set with your battery. Now, it's always a good recommendation as soon as you get your camera to fully recharge your battery all the way up the first time, and then maybe have a second battery when you're traveling just in case something happens to the first one or you shoot a lot of pictures or video and you need an extra battery because you need more power. Moving around to the side of the camera, you will find where you put your SD card. In this case, I have a Lexar 2000X 64 gigabyte card. You pop it in right here. It only goes in one way. Listen for it to click, shut the door, and you're good to go with your SD card. Now moving to the top, you have your on and off switch. This is how you turn it on and off. I know it sounds simple, but once you know it, you'll never forget it. Simply use your finger, go to on. You'll see everything else turns on. You wanna turn it off. Boom, you turn it off just like that. This is your shutter button. You press this halfway down to do your auto focusing and then all the way down to take a picture, press it once, or you could hold it down in continuous shooting mode and you can shoot multiple frames a second. Right here, you have a plus minus button. This is gonna come in handy as you get into the manual modes. If you need to change your aperture, I'll demonstrate that later. This is the info button to bring up info on the back of the screen. And this red button right here is your record button button for when you are shooting video. Moving on, we have the mode dial. When you first get your camera, it's gonna be in the green mode. Green mode means auto. The camera's gonna basically do everything it needs to do for you to help you get the best picture possible based off of what the camera thinks. Now, the only thing you need to do is take the picture and the camera will do the rest. Now, how many times have you been in a situation where you've seen somebody's flash pop up on their camera and they shouldn't have the flash on? Look, in this case, in auto mode, if you need the flash, the flash is gonna pop up, but how do you turn that off if you're in a situation where you don't want the flash to go off? Simple, right here on the dial, you have a flash. I call this the anti-flash mode because it has the no smoking sign through it. Now the flash will not pop up. So moving around the dial, we have the preset program modes that the camera has for you. In this case, this one, the girl with the hat on, is a portrait mode. This is your landscape mode. This is a little kid doing something. I don't even know what that is. If you have kids, go into this mode if you want the camera to shoot kids better. Uh, next is the running man mode, or if you're shooting sports. Now let me tell you what these program modes do. They let the camera know that you're gonna be shooting a specific type of situation, and the camera's going to give you what it thinks are the best settings. Now I'm a big fan of learning how to get out of auto, but when you're first starting out, this is an okay place to be. I started there as well. I lived in the running man when I shot a lot of sports, so it's okay to be there. Next up, we have what they call macro mode. Now this doesn't mean that you'll be able to use any lens and it will turn into macro. It's just meant to give you the settings to shoot flowers or anything close up. And then the last one that we have here is for night portraits. It's a really cool feature. Try it out for yourself. And then we have the special effects mode, which I personally don't use myself. And then now we have the manual modes. Manual means you set the aperture, you set the shutter speed, you make all of the decisions for the camera. This is aperture priority, meaning you set the aperture and the camera's gonna go ahead and set everything else auto. This is shutter priority, meaning you set the shutter speed to where you want it to be, it's gonna stay there, and the camera will change the other settings to match it for the right exposure. And then we've got P mode or program, or also commonly known as 
professional mode. It's really called program mode. It's basically full auto. The camera's going to make all the decisions for you as if it was in the auto mode, but you have access to more menu settings, which I'll show you in a couple of seconds. And then moving on, we've got the guide mode, which is gonna help you take pictures. It's gonna help educate you just a little bit. Uh, all right, so that's the mode dial. Moving around to the top of the camera, this is the hot shoe. This is where you would put an external flash if you had an extra flash. Moving around to the front, you may notice from time to time that the there's a light that comes on to help you autofocus. This is an autofocus indicator light. It helps in low light situations to shine some light on what you're photographing. It also can become annoying, so I'll show you how to turn that off later. So let's turn the camera on to this side. You can see you've got a flash button that will pop up the flash if you hit that. You've got your function button. That's a programmable button that you can set yourself. You have a button to take the lens on and off. Let me show you how to take the lens on and off that comes in your box because it comes separate. The camera's there and the lens is there. This is what you need to do to put it on. So I'm going to turn it this way. When it's off, you go ahead and line up the dot right here, the white dot, with the white dot on the camera. You're going to go ahead and line that up. Boom. Listen for the click as you turn it. And to take it off to change lenses, if you have multiple lenses, you go ahead and click this button on the side, turn it away from you, take it off. Now keep in mind, you don't want to touch anything inside of the camera. Don't touch the mirror, don't play with that, don't do anything to that. That could render your camera not working if you mess something up there. It's sensitive stuff, so make sure you're careful when you put your lenses on and you take your lenses off. All right, let's keep looking around the camera. Right here, you see the camera's badge. That's right, this is a D3400, that's what it tells you it is. And then right above that, you see these three dots. That is where your microphone Phone is for when you are shooting video. As we turn the camera to the side more, we have a Bluetooth symbol for connecting Bluetooth and doing your Wi-Fi. As you open this door, you will see you have a USB port as well as an HDMI port. The HDMI port is for if you want to connect to your TV and show people your photos. You could also use SnapBridge. That is a function that is inside of this camera as well. Now moving around to the back of the camera, this is your viewfinder right here. This is what you put your eye up to to see the picture that you're gonna take. This is what they call the AEL, which is auto exposure lock and auto focus lock. You're probably not gonna be using this button anytime soon, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail about it. Right here is the one dial that you have for changing your shutter speed as well as changing your aperture. I'm gonna explain how to do that when I get into the camera itself. Next we have the live view button. The live view is what you use in case you don't want to use the viewfinder right here. You can turn the live view on to take photos, but it's what you also use to turn on right before you shoot video. I highly recommend that when you're going to take photos, you do not use the live view mode. This is not a very stable way to hold your camera. Tuck your elbows in like this and then move the camera up to your eye to get a more stable image. This is how I recommend shooting. Also, your hand goes underneath, not over the top or to do anything like this. This is the proper way to hold it. It's much more stable and you'll look better while you're doing it. All right, moving here, we have the up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, BA, select start button. This is your D-pad. That's how you get around your menu. That's also how you change focusing points. The OK button's in the middle. This right here is how you change how many frames a second you'd like to shoot. I'm going to show you that shortly. And this is your trash can. This is how you delete the images on the camera. I'm a big fan of not deleting any of the photos on the camera, just in case you delete something that may have been good that you would have noticed in the computer later. Moving around to this side of the camera, we've got the play button. That's how you play back your photos. The menu button to get into the menu system. The magnifying glass to zoom in on your photos or zoom out. And then the info button. And one more thing I want to show you on the bottom of the camera is your tripod socket. In case you want to put it on a tripod or a monopod, you just screw that in right there and you are good to go. Next up, we have the diopter. If you wear glasses and you want to compensate for that, you can change the diopter. Or if you need to change it just to make things a little sharper for your eyes to see, well, go ahead and use the diopter simply turn it like this or hold it up to your eye and as you're looking through make sure you're focused on something first and then turn the diopter. 
Right before we jump into the menu mode, I wanna let you know that I'm gonna be in the manual mode on the top dial. If your camera starts in the auto mode, you won't have access to all of the menu features, and the way to get to all of them is to go into one of the manual modes. So now let's get into the menu section. This is one of the most important things to set up in your camera to make sure it's set the right way for how you're going to shoot. So I'm gonna walk you through how I personally would set it if I was shooting. Now you might notice a cable plugged into my camera. That's so that we can record the menu system so you can see it in your video. So the first thing you're gonna see when you turn your camera on with the 18 to 55 kit lens is a little note that says, before taking photos, rotate the zoom lens, or sorry, the zoom ring to extend the lens. There's a button on the side. You need to turn this in order to allow you to start shooting pictures. It's a feature I absolutely hate, but it's something that most of the camera companies are putting out there. So let's move into the menu system. I go ahead and hit the menu button, and the first thing at the top that you see is your playback menu button. You could delete everything right here, which is, well, I stay out of here. I don't even bother with this section at all. You've got your playback folder, playback all, playback display options. This is for showing back your photos. So in this case, you could have it just show the image only. You could have it show highlights, RGB histogram, I don't personally turn on. Shooting data is definitely important. And overview, and then I go ahead and hit the OK button. Now, you may notice that little question mark that shows up in the bottom left-hand corner. On the camera, right here where the minus button is, the magnifying glass with the minus, there's a question mark. If you hit that, you basically have a user's guide or the manual built right into the camera so you can read it. It says, delete all or selected images. Protected images will not be deleted. So anytime you see that question mark pop up and you don't know what it's referring to, you can read it right there because it has in the entire user's manual built in to the camera. Now I just changed the playback display options and they're all saved there. Let me show you what that looks like for one of the photos. Right here if we hit up you'll see this is with no information. This is with the information that it was shot with. This is extra information whatever they call that. Uh, and then even more. So you can change this for whatever you would like it to be. I like to have that on, but back into the menu section we go. Image review on. This means, question mark, choose whether to display new images in the monitor immediately after shooting. A lot of people like to take a picture and have it automatically turn back on. I personally don't, because you don't want to get in the habit of taking a picture and then looking at the picture and then taking a picture and looking at picture, because you will end up missing the pictures that you should be capturing. So I turn this off, especially in low light situations, because it gets a little annoying when the screen comes on and is much brighter than the situation I'm in. So go ahead and hit off. I hit to the right on the D-pad, and it now says off. Auto image rotation on, tall, I leave that as well. Don't change any more of that stuff. Now let's get into the shooting menu. Don't hit reset menu because you don't wanna reset it once you get this set. Image quality, how do you wanna take your pictures? Do you want JPEG basic, JPEG normal, JPEG fine, NEF, which is raw, that's a raw file, or raw plus JPEG. Now if you don't understand what raw is right now, that's personally okay. I am the guy that says I shoot raw. It's on all of my shirts because I shoot in RAW. I like to use the RAW format because there's more data there for me to make my files look better. But when you're just starting out at the beginning, the JPEG is gonna be personally fine. So what my recommendation is for you is to shoot the RAW plus JPEG and put the RAW away until you understand why the RAW file is important and you'll bring that out in the future. Keep in mind that shooting RAW plus JPEG fine is gonna take up more space on your memory cards. You should have at least a 32 gig card, if not a 64 gigabyte card inside this camera. Make sure you've got extra ones in case you fill them up shooting video or photos. But my recommendation is RAW plus JPEG fine as you're starting out. Now you'll notice that image size is grayed out because you've already set it to raw fine. Now that brings up something that I wanna reiterate to you guys right now, is if I was to go into the auto mode, I'm gonna turn the dial to get back to the auto mode, 
you will notice when you go into the menu system that a lot of stuff is grayed out. That means you don't have access to that mode or those settings in auto. That's why if you want to make those changes, go ahead and use the P mode, the program mode, to get access or full access to the entire menu. I do this in manual personally. That way I have full access to what I need access to. So let's get back into the menu system right here. Next up, we have ISO sensitivity. This is how sensitive to light your camera will be. You have different modes. You can do independently change each one. The more light you have, the lower the number is going to be. As you get into lower light situations, as it gets darker, you're going to use a higher ISO. Now keep in mind, the higher the ISO, the more grainy or noisy the photo is going to look. Keep that in mind. We also talk about that in my 11 Days to Better Photography, which you can sign up for for free right now at fronosphoto.com 11 days. We have a whole free video on ISO inside of that free guide. All right, so I leave this set to whatever it is I'm going to shoot. If it's going to be 800, then I'll set it to 800 ISO. This is auto ISO sensitivity control. I personally turn this off. I want to select the ISO myself, and then you don't have to worry about anything else there. White balance, I leave to auto. Set your picture controls. If you're going to be shooting JPEGs, you will want to set your picture style. It, you have standard, you have neutral, vivid, monochrome. I do not recommend ever shooting in monochrome. Now keep in mind, these settings only affect the JPEG. If you shoot in RAW, those settings will not be reflected in the RAW file. So even if you shot in monochrome, you still would have the color data. It's just turned off when you bring it into the computer and you can turn it back on later only if you shoot RAW. So generally speaking, you would leave it in standard uh, and if you're going to shoot video, the picture styles reflect in your video. So if you're going to shoot monochrome, keep in mind your video is going to be in monochrome as well. So moving on, we go back. We've got color space. I leave it in sRGB. Active delighting is something that I personally turn off. You can hit the question mark and read about that if you would like. Noise reduction, I turn that off as well. I don't like the noise reduction. What it does is it smooths out your image and makes it look less sharp. Uh, so I leave that off. Vignetting control, normal. Distortion control off. Focus modes, let's talk about focus modes. AFA, this is auto servo AF. What this means is the camera's gonna choose the best focus mode that it thinks you should be using for the situation you're in. I personally don't like this one because it may choose, say, continuous focus when you're trying to shoot a subject that's not moving. Speaking of a subject that's not moving, you have AFS or single area or single servo AF. This is what you use to shoot subjects that aren't moving. When you press the shutter button halfway down, you lock your focus in. If you move your finger, away, you're going to need to refocus by pressing your finger halfway down to lock that back in again. So if you're going to shoot, say, a rock sitting there, you lock the focus. If you move your camera left or right or up or down, as long as your finger is pressed halfway down on the button, the focus is not going to change. But remember, if your subject moves or you move, you're going to want to refocus to make sure that something that you're shooting is going to be in focus. AFC is continual AF. That means you're gonna continually be able to focus as long as your finger is pressed halfway down on the button. This is great for shooting sports or subjects that are moving. And then manual focus, if you wanna go in and manually focus yourself, you'll just need to turn the manual ring for whatever lens you're using. Next up, you'll see live view for movies. We'll talk about that later when we get into movies as well. AF area mode. What this means is what you will see through your viewfinder. Auto area AF means all of the red dots may light up or just some of them may light up inside of your viewfinder. The camera's making the decision for you. 3D tracking, which uses all 11 points, is pretty cool if you're shooting something like an air show or subjects that are moving super fast. 90 some percent of the time, it's gonna be pretty accurate where it's gonna track the subject automatically for you, making sure that you have the right focus point. Keep in mind, if you're gonna shoot, say, a soccer player, it may focus in on the foot when you wanted the face in focus, 
but it's pretty good for most of the time. Dynamic Area AF is a great place to shoot. That means that you can select your focus point. Maybe you want to focus on the left or you want to focus in the center, but if you're shooting a subject that's moving in continuous and you're in the left focus point and then the subject moves to the middle, the focus point's going to track them and jump around. And that's pretty good 90% of the time. Moving on, we've got Dynamic Area AF. This is where you can move around and independently select the focus point that you want it to be, whether it's in the center, the top, the left, or the right. You are changing that yourself. Now, when you're in continuous focus and you have a subject on the left hand side and they jump to the middle, you won't see the focus point automatically change, but no in continuous focus, it's using the information from that focus point to make sure that they're in focus. And then you have single point AF. This is really good if you're you're not doing continuous subjects. So I leave it on dynamic area AF most of the time. Built-in AF assist illuminator, that is this light right here in low light situations. It's gonna put out a beam of light that can be pretty annoying. So I personally turn that off so I don't annoy the people or so that people don't know I'm actually taking their picture if I'm trying not to let them know I'm taking their picture. So I turn that off. Metering mode, I leave this where it's set right now. Flash control, leave that where it's at. Optical VR. The lens that comes with the camera is an 18 to 55 VR lens. There's no longer a switch on the camera to turn VR on or off because I guess Nikon wants you to keep VR on all the time. You can leave it on or turn it off. You might as well just leave it on. Next up, we have movie settings. So you've got your frame rate is automatically set to 1080 at 60 frames a second. That's gonna use a lot more data because it's 60 frames a second. I highly recommend that if you're gonna shoot and you want that cinematic look that you see in the movies, you're gonna go ahead and shoot 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames. Let's see what the other options are. Those are the options. So if you wanna shoot in HD, I, sh I recommend shooting in 24P. That's what you could do. Movie quality, always put that on the higher quality. You don't wanna shoot at lower quality, but keep in mind, that's gonna use up more memory in your memory card. Moving on, we've got microphone. Most likely you're gonna leave it in auto because you can't plug a microphone, an external microphone into this, but you actually do have controls for manual, but I'm gonna just leave it set to auto sensitivity right now. Uh, wind noise reduction, I leave off. Manual movie settings, I actually don't even know what that means. Why don't we hit the question mark? Manual movie settings, choose on, allows the shutter speed and ISO sensitivity for movies to be selected manually. Well, that's a good thing. If you wanna take more control of your camera and you wanna shoot your videos in manual, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, in this case, let's turn it on. You may wanna leave it off, but of course, that is up to you. Now we move on to the wrench mode. This is your setup menu. I know this is a long video. All I have to say is just watch it once. There's a lot of information in here. If you take one piece of useful information out, then we've done our job. But please stick with us. This is really good stuff if you're just learning. Format your memory card. Now, I'm not gonna format this memory card, but before you start taking pictures, you wanna always format or reformat your memory card inside the camera. You don't want to delete the pictures on the computer and then bring it back into here and not reformat it. Now, a little bit of warning is don't reformat your card until you've backed up all of those files on your computer in at least two places. Please, double back things up. You'll be much happier in the future in case something happens. Date stamp. Remember in the 1980s when you would burn in the date in the bottom of your photo? Yeah, I hated it too. Don't do that. Don't, don't do that. So leave this off. Time zone. This is where you would go to set your time zone for wherever you're at in the world. Language. Whatever language you want to speak, the camera will speak it to you. It won't actually speak it to you, but you can read it in, in Dutch or German or Spanish if that's what you'd like to do, but I only know English, so I'll leave it there. Monitor brightness, I leave it set to zero, but if you're in a dark situation and you don't want your monitor to bother, bother anybody, you could lower it or you could raise it if you need to see it outside a little better. Uh, I leave it set to zero. Info display format, now let me show you what this looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the info display right here. This is where it's automatically set to when you first get your camera. I'm not a big fan of how this looks. Uh, let me show you what I personally like. So under info display, under the manual PS and uh, PSA and M, I like to go up to, 
actually this one, the Indiglo effect. I'll do the same if you want to set it for auto modes as well. It's much cleaner and easier. Let me show you what this looks like. I go back here and you can see the info display much easier. It lets me know I'm in manual, my shutter speed, my aperture, the ISO, all of those different settings. It's much cleaner, so that's how I personally set it up. Auto info display on, let me see what that means. This information display turns on when the shutter release button is pressed halfway down, halfway and released. All right, I leave that on so we can get the info display. I actually really like the info display because you can get access to the menu systems without having to actually go into the menu systems. I'll go through that later. Uh, auto timers, we do normal. Self timers, you could change all that if you would like. Lock mirror up for cleaning, you're not going to do that most likely. Image dust off, reference photo, not doing that either. Image comment means if you want to put your name in the camera, you could do that or put a comment in there like my photos. You can do that and it'll be saved in the metadata of your files. And also you can add copyright information. I like to do that photo by, or not photo by, but just Jared Poland, Frono's photo. You can put in there whatever you would like for the copyright information. Next up, we have the beep. It is set to low automatically. I believe when you get your camera, low, high, low, high, low, high, low. It sounds just like my Arkanoid video game. Oh. Okay, or you could leave it off. If you're in a quiet situation and you're in single focus mode and you don't want somebody to hear the focus beep, well, you can turn it off. I personally leave it on high. I want to hear it all the time. I like to know that I'm locked in focus. Now, that's only for single focus, not continuous focus. As we continue on, flicker, I leave that on auto. Buttons, I don't even know what, ah, yes. You can change the different function buttons. I usually leave it just where it's at right now. Range finder, nope, leave that off. Manual focus ring is on. File number sequence, I like to leave this on. Now the reason I like to leave this on is because if I take 100 pictures and then I take the card out and I go and take another 100, I don't want it to say zero through 100 every time. I want it to be one, I want it to be one, to I believe it's 9,999 9 before it resets back to one again. Now I leave the storage folder to 100, file naming, I leave it to DSC. And let's see, some other data we can't get. Airplane mode is all, that's interesting. I didn't even know they added an airplane mode. That's crazy. Uh, connect to smart device, that's if you want to do the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabled. Send to smart device auto, I leave this off because you don't want to take, you don't want every picture you're taking to transfer over to your phone and use up your battery. Um, let's keep going here, slot empty release lock. Very happy to see that Nikon has this set to lock automatically. This means if you do not have a memory card in your camera, it will not take a picture. So you don't think and make the mistake that I made when I was shooting film back in the day where I was taking a whole roll of pictures, except I didn't have any film in the camera. So reset all settings. No, we're not going to do that. And that is your setup menu. Right before we jump into the next section, you have a camera, you have lenses, well, how do you organize them and keep them protected? Well, I have a free app for you that you can download at mygearvault.com. Go ahead and check it out because it is the best way to input, organize, and protect your gear. So let's move on to the next setting. We just finished the setup menu. As we scroll down, we've got the retouch menu. I don't retouch my photos inside of the camera. I save that for doing it in the computer. And then the last thing you'll see is recent settings. So all of the recent settings that you've changed, there's a menu for that and that will constantly be changing. So that basically finishes up your entire menu section. But I told you about the info display. I wanna show you some things on that. So let me get back out to the info display. So this is what you see. You see the 1 2 50th of a second and you see that it's changing. That's because I'm turning the back dial. This is tied in in manual mode with your shutter speed. Now you see that 5.6? Well, how do I change that if I only have one dial to use? You look for this plus minus button, you press that down and you turn the back dial again and you can see that the aperture is changing. What I love about this screen is that it shows you where your focus points are. You can see that they're moving as I do that. You see the ISO and how many frames are left, 160. But how do you make changes to settings without going into the menu system? Simple, you go like this. You hit the I button right here on the back of the camera. It opens up this display so you can make the changes to anything you want to make a change to. Oh, I want to change my ISO. Okay. Do I want it to be 100? 
Do I want it to be 25,600? Probably not in most situations, but that's how you can quickly and easily get to the different modes to change them. Go from AFA to AFS or AFC, or you could change your focus points. You could also change your metering, but everything that you found, or the most important things that you found in your menu system, they're found right here, so you can easily access them at any time that you want. It's great that you have that in this Nikon D3400. So next I wanna show you how to look at the photos on your camera. Simply hit the play button right here. You can see that a photo's up on the screen. If you hit up, you change it to the different settings of the photo. You could see that also when you hit down. If you notice this blinky white thing, that means you have the highlights on. That is telling you that there is no data in that specific section of the photo. Don't really worry about that too much, it's there. Now to change through the images, you could hit to the right, or you could hit to the left to cycle through, and that's how you get through the images. Now if you wanna delete them, I don't recommend doing this. You hit the delete button twice to confirm. In this case, I'm hitting cancel because I don't like deleting the photos right on the camera. Next, I wanna show you how to shoot video with your Nikon D3400. This is pretty simple. Look for the LV button on the back of the camera and go ahead and hit it, and that turns on the live view mode. But you're not ready to shoot video just yet. It thinks you wanna take a still photo, so you could take a photo just like this using the LCD to frame your photo, but you wanna shoot video. So how do we turn video on? Well, there's nothing around the mode dial that says anything about video like a lot of other cameras offer. In this case, you see this red dot, this red button right here? That's your record button. Go ahead and hit record, and you're now recording video, yep. You are recording video at the settings you set in the menu setting for movie settings. Now, autofocus. Autofocus is not gonna be very good inside this camera. This is where you're gonna wanna go ahead and get into manual focus and go ahead and do that. If you wanna track your subject, it's gonna be much harder because these cameras aren't really designed to fully track your subject. If you wanna shoot something that's not moving, like this camera over here, I can press the shutter button halfway down and you see the box is currently red. When I press it halfway down, it turns green and it's now in focus. So that is pretty much the video mode. It's simple, get in the live view, hit the record button to stop the video from recording, hit the red button again, it will stop recording on your screen and go back into live view for taking photos. So that's about it. I know it's a long video and I know I threw a lot of information out there, but go ahead and hit the subscribe button here on YouTube so you can come back at any time to rewatch this video so you can use it as your free user's guide. I know there's a lot of information, but it's much better to watch my video than to read the user's manual itself because I've taken all of the hard work out of it for you. Now, if you wanna get my free 11 Days to Better Photography mini video course, head on over to fronosphoto.com com slash 11 days to sign up for that for free right now and we'll start sending you 11 videos over 11 days that is going to make you a better photographer so thank you very much for watching jared poland fro nose photo.com see ya subscribe now Watch this, watch this video.